Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on anti-cancer chemotherapy. In this video, what we're going to do is discuss uh, thymidylate symphatase inhibitors. Okay, um, so there are two drugs which we're going to discuss. The first is 5-fluorouracil, and the second is 5 fluoro 2 deoxy uh, uridine okay and these are both inhibitors of the enzyme thymidylate symphotase okay so in order to understand what the effect of these drugs is going to be we need to look at what the role of thymidylate symphotase is i.e. how thymidylate symphotase actually works okay so to understand how thymidylate symphotase works, we then need to know a little bit about folic acid because thymidylate symphotase uses folic acid basically. Okay, so we will start with the structure of folic acid. We'll see how it's converted into dihydrofolate and then tetrahydrofolate, and then we'll finally see how you produce N5, N10, methylene tetrahydrofolate. So, we start with folic acid then. So, folic acid is often referred to as vitamin B9, okay? So, there isn't just one vitamin B, there are many vitamin Bs. It's often known as the uh, vitamin B complex, and folic acid is one of these vitamins in this B vitamin complex, okay? And it's also often just known as folate. Okay, so let me now show you the structure of folic acid. Uh, and before we discuss the structure of folic, uh, folic acid, I think we need to discuss uh, the names of a few aromatic rings. So firstly, uh, everything we draw in this video is going to be skeletal diagrams because uh, skeletal diagrams are easier on the eyes than um, uh, molecular formulae. Uh, so in skeletal formulae you do not show uh, carbon atoms, instead you just have corners uh, and these corners are implicitly denoting uh, carbon atoms. And where you have missing bonds off carbon atoms, we assume that those are made up, uh, those consist of bonds to hydrogen atoms. So you don't show carbons and you don't show uh, hydrogens coming off carbons, but you show everything else just like a molecular formulae. Okay, so we'll start off with a revision of the structure of benzene. Okay, so the pure benzene is just a six-membered ring like so, and then uh, you have alternating double and single bonds, okay? So the, its mm, skeletal formulae would look like this. We've got these six carbon atoms denoted by the corners here. Then we've got alternating double and single bonds. And you can see that every carbon, if we take, for instance, this carbon here, has three bonds, basically, shown by the skeletal formula. And then the final bond is not shown. So implicitly, that final bond is to a hydrogen atom. Okay, so basically it's a six-membered carbon ring where you have alternating double and single bonds between uh, the carbons, and then you have a hydrogen atom of all six of the carbons. Okay, so this is the benzene ring. Okay, now what we want to look at is what a pyrimidine ring is. So a pyrimidine ring is a slightly modified uh, benzene ring. So basically what you do is you take out two of these carbons, okay? So let's say we take out this carbon here and this carbon here, and you replace them with nitrogens, okay? So um, here is a nitrogen, and then it's got a double bond to another carbon up there. There's a carbon there, and then another nitrogen down here. Let me just complete the ring, and then I'll worry about the double and single bonds. So here's our six-membered ring, and again, we haven't shown the carbons, so there's implicitly a carbon here, a carbon here, and a carbon here, and a carbon here, okay? And then we put the alternating double and single bonds in again. Now, these two nitrogens, they only need three bonds each. They've got three bonds each, so they don't need anything else coming off. However, the other four carbons will still have a hydrogen coming off each one. Okay, so this modified aromatic ring is what's known as a pyrimidine ring. Okay, and we'll see this pyrimidine ring structure in quite a few of the molecules that we see in this video. 
Okay, and then one final uh, type of aromatic ring that I want to explain is very similar to the uh, pyrimidine ring, except that the nitrogens in this case are, don't have a single carbon in between them. Instead, they have two carbons in between them, so they're at either end of the ring this time. Okay, so this is the structure uh, which is known as a pyrazine ring. Okay, so pyrimidine rings and pyrazine rings, they have the same atoms making them up. However, the positions of the nitrogen relative to one another uh, is different between the pyrimidine and the pyrazine ring. Okay, and we'll see both of these in uh, the structures that we're going to discuss in this video. So, without further ado now, let's discuss the structure of folic acid. Okay, so folic acid has both a pyrimidine ring and a pyrazine ring. However, the pyrimidine ring is not quite a pyrimidine ring. It's a near miss. Okay, so instead of having the full pyrimidine ring, what you've done is you've broken one of these bonds here, and instead you've now got a carbonyl group of this top carbon here. Okay, and then a hydrogen will have to come off this nitrogen. Okay, so here is, oh, we, we need a nitrogen down there. So that structure is supposed to be a pyrimidine ring or a near pyrimidine ring, but you still have this double bond and this double bond here. Okay, you also then have an amino group coming off down here. So an H2N comes off down there. Okay, right. Uh, then the neighboring ring is a pyrazine ring. So we then have nitrogen here and a nitrogen here, a double bond here, single bond there, and a double bond there. So this has alternating double and single bonds and the hydrogens are opposite one another. So this is a pyrazine ring. Okay, then what you have is a methylene group coming off here. So this is a carbon with two hydrogens. Then you have a nitrogen up here. Okay, and this nitrogen has a single hydrogen off it. And then it's also bound to a benzene ring, which I'll show here. This benzene ring will be nice and small. Okay, so here's our benzene ring. And then the benzene ring has a carbonyl group off it, okay, which is in an amide link. So you have an amino group down here. And then off here, you then have an amino acid. So this is the amino group of the amino acid, which is bound via an amide link to the rest of the structure down here. And then here's the alpha carbon of the amino acid, and up here you'll then have the carboxylic acid group coming off here. So here's the alcohol group of the carboxylic acid group. And the amino acid we've got here is uh, glutamate. So here are the two meth me yeah, methylene groups of glutamate. Here's the uh, carboxylic acid group down here. Okay, so uh, this is the structure of folic acid then. So we've got this carboxylic, uh, sorry, we've got this amino acid up here which is glutamate and the rest of this structure, so if you were to hydrolyze this bond between the uh, glutamate over here and um, this structure here, to return this to a carboxylic acid. So you'd have the carbonyl group there and then you'd have an alcohol group off here instead of this glutamate, okay? That would be known as toroic acid, okay? So toroic acid is everything apart from uh, this glutamate stuck off here, okay? So in, take the glutamate off and stick an alcohol group and you've got toroic acid. So folic acid is really uh, glutamate stuck onto toroic acid. Okay, so, what's the importance of folic acid then now? Well, the importance is that it can be converted to another molecule. So it can be converted to dihydrofolate by the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase. Okay, and you might think this is a bizarre name because it's not actually acting on dihydrofolate. But what we're going to see is that it's actually um, it's actually um, going to work on dihydrofolate as well. So it's going to reduce folic acid, but it's also going to reduce dihydrofolate afterwards to convert it into tetrahydrofolate. Okay, so uh, 
Um, let's now draw out the structure of dihydrofolate, which is what you're going to turn the folic acid into. So you're going to convert this into, and I'm not going to put it there because I want to draw my structure here. You're going to convert it into dihydrofolate. Okay, so dihydrofolate reductase is going to convert folic acid or folate into dihydrofolate. And to do this, it has to bring in two hydrogen atoms, which means two protons and two electrons. Okay, so what are you going to do? Basically, you're going to cleave this bond here, the second of the two bonds in that double bond between the nitrogen and the carbon. You're going to break it. Now, when you break that, it has two electrons in, one from the nitrogen and one from the carbon. So now the nitrogen and the carbon are both going to have unpaired electrons. What you're going to do is stick one of these hydrogen atoms onto the nitrogen and the other onto the carbon. And that's going to create you dihydrofolate, because it's a folate molecule where you've now got two hydrogen atoms stuck onto it. Okay, so let's draw the structure of dihydrofolate. So we can now revise our structure again. So here's our near pyrimidine ring here, okay, with the carbonyl group there. And then down here, we've got another nitrogen atom, okay, and we've got a double bond there, a double bond here, and we've got an amino group down here. Okay, we've then got our no longer a pyrazine ring here, but it was a pyrazine ring, because we've now cleaved this double bond here, okay? And we've got a hydrogen here, and we will have another hydrogen off this carbon here, but of course this is a skeletal structure, so we don't show hydrogens coming off carbons. Okay, then we have this methylene group coming up here, and the nitrogen's here, and we can use that and convert it into a hydrogen off that nitrogen. Okay, then we've got our benzene ring coming off up here. Okay, so there's our benzene ring, right? And just put the alternating double and single bonds in. And then off here, we've got our uh, carboxylic acid group, which has now been bound to uh, the amino group, okay, of glutamic acid. So here's the alpha carbon of glutamic acid, here's the carboxylic acid group of glutamic acid up here. Okay, and let me just move this over a little bit. And then down here we then have the R group of glutamic acid, one methylene group, two methylene groups, and then finally the carboxylic acid group over here. So the carbonyl group and the alcohol group to make the carboxylic acid group. Okay, so this is dihydrofolate. Now we're going to do a similar reaction again. So we're going to bring in another two hydrogen atoms. Okay, so two protons and two electrons. And we're going to reduce the dihydrofolate molecule now. And by the way, when you add protons, well, sorry, when you add hydrogen atoms onto something, that is known as reduction. Okay, so we've reduced folic acid into dihydrofolate, we're now going to reduce dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate. And again, the enzyme which catalyzes this is dihydrofolate reductase, which is also often abbreviated to DHFR for short, dihydrofolate reductase. Okay, right. Um, so it's now going to reduce dihydrofolate, and this is why the enzyme is named dihydrofolate reductase. Um, the, so it's not named after the fact that it reduces folic acid, but after the fact that it reduces dihydrofolate. Okay, so how are we going to reduce dihydrofolate again? Well, we're going to break this bond now in the pyrazine ring, and we're going to then give one of the electrons back to the nitrogen and one back to the carbon, and then both the nitrogen and the carbon will have unpaired electrons and will bind a hydrogen to the nitrogen and a hydrogen to the carbon, and that will create a tetrahydrofolate. And we'll draw that out in the next video.